So we are working on solving linear inequalities, and this video is over compound inequalities. So let's do what we need to do, and that is define what a compound inequality is. Well, basically, a compound inequality is when we join or when we compound two inequalities together. And we can do it one of two ways. We can either compound it together by using the statement and, like in my second example down here, or we can compound two of them together by using the statement or, like my first example here. And I'm showing you these two examples down here so you can see what these will typically look like on your homework. Now we'll get back to these examples here in a moment, but first let me explain the difference between an and and an or statement because there absolutely is a huge difference involved. And so we need to make sure we understand that difference so we submit the right solution at the end of our examples. So the first thing that we're going to start with is an and statement. And whenever we see an AND statement, that is the same as an intersection of sets. And just so you're aware of it, the symbol that represents an intersection of sets is this symbol here. It kind of looks like an N to represent the N for intersection. To help us understand what an intersection of sets are, I have drawn up a Venn diagram here with these two circles. An intersection of sets is when our two sets actually overlap. So the intersection of these two sets would be right here in the middle. It has to fit in set A and set B at the exact same time. So to help you understand this, I've kind of set up a real world situation here. Let's just say that you are in a room full of people. Now, some of these people are wearing black shoes, and if you're wearing black shoes, then you fit into my A circle. And some of these people in this room are wearing a green shirt, and if they are in that group, then they are in my B circle. Now, for us to fulfill the criteria of A and B, or A intersect B, they have to be fulfilling both sets of criteria. They have to be wearing black shoes and a green shirt. So it just fits with the wording that we use in our English language. And means it has to be both sets of criteria at the same time. So if we want A and B, that would be this group here, the people that are wearing both black shoes and green shirt at the same time. So that's what our and statement means. Let's move on to what our or statement means. Before we get to our Venn diagram, let's again discuss the vocabulary and the symbols that go with it. Or is like saying a union of sets. And notice the letter that it starts with. And notice our symbol, U for union. I have the same Venn diagram set up here, my circle A and my circle B. If I want to talk about the union of these two sets, then it is A or B. And that actually is anywhere in both of these circles. It can be just in the A circle, like over here. It can be just in the B circle, like over here. Or it could be in the overlap, like we saw back in the AND statement. So back to the same example. If you're in a room full of people wearing black shoes and a green shirt, and if we're looking for A or B, then it's the people that are wearing black shoes or a green shirt or both. So our final answer here is if you are wearing either of those statements, just like our or statement means in the English language. Okay, now that we see what and and or means, let's actually use this in an inequality example. So example one, I have x minus two less than or equal to five, or one half x is greater than six. Now remember, or is anywhere it's satisfied, and we'll have to keep that in mind when we're doing our final answer here. The way to solve these inequalities is just to solve them one at a time and keep that or statement all the way through. 
So these are pretty simple ones. To solve the left-hand one, I just add 2 to both sides. Leaves me with x is less than or equal to 7. Or on my right, to get rid of that 2, let me multiply by the reciprocal or multiply by 2 in itself to cancel it out. Gives me x is greater than 12. So if I'm just looking for the solution, then this is what I have here. Now to help us fully understand and and or statements, it's always easiest to look at a graph of this. So on my number line, I have both numbers in question, 7 and 12. Let me shade both of them respectively. So if I want to shade x is less than or equal to 7, I find 7, shade to the left, and I have an or equal to, so I have a bracket. If I want to shade x is greater than 12, I shade greater than 12, and it is a parenthesis because I do not include the endpoint. And remember again, or is any place that it's shaded. So every place that it's shaded here is part of my final answer. Anything that fits into any one of these intervals is an acceptable answer to this problem. So my interval notation then, since I have two separate parts to the graph, that means I actually have to have two separate parts of my interval notation. Just mimics the graph exactly. So my first interval is negative infinity up to 7. And my second interval is 12 to positive infinity. Now we have to have something to conjoin these two inequalities so we can say that this is one solution and the symbol that we put in between is U just like we saw for the union of sets. So there's the answer to our interval notation. Our set builder notation does not change from what we've ever done in the past. We start with our braces and X such that and then we fill in our blank with the same solution that we had over here. X is less than or equal to 7, or, and we do use the word or there, X is greater than 12. And so now you can see what a compound inequality with an or statement might look like. Let's do a second example here, but in this example I have an and statement. I suggest that you pause the video and solve this one on your own, but see if you can get your notations over here correct as well. Okay, the solve part of this should be fairly easy. Divide by 3 on the left here gives me x is less than or equal to negative 3. And, don't lose your word because that makes a big difference, and add 2 on the right over here. So x is less than 4. I always suggest that you start with a graph because that will give you a good visual of what's actually happening. And since most of us are visual learners, that's a great place to start. Plugging my numbers in, I have negative 3 and 4. And I'm actually going to shade these in two different colors. My negative 3, I'll shade that one in blue. X is less than or equal to negative 3 with a bracket. And my X is less than 4, let me shade that one in green. I shade X is less than 4 with a parenthesis. Now let's go back and review what an AND statement is. An AND statement is when both conditions are satisfied at the same time. So it's when our two circles overlap. Or on our number line, it's when our two shaded regions overlap. So this graph here is kind of like a scratch work graph. Let me do a second graph, which is like a final graph. The only place where these two shaded regions overlap are negative 3 and to the left. So instead of this being my final solution over here, my final solution is really just x is less than or equal to negative 3, because that's where my AND condition or my overlap is satisfied. So this would be my final graph. And so my interval notation would only be that interval there, negative infinity up to negative 3 with a bracket. 
And my set builder notation, again, the only place where there's an overlap. So x is less than or equal to negative 3 in the proper notation. So I've shown you a, an example of each the and in the or statement here. Um, this is where I'm going to stop this video. But in the next video, I'm going to give you more examples of mostly just the and statement. Um, different ways that we can actually see that and statement rather than it written just like this here.